How, I wouldn't have even known it too, but God gave me a dream. He showed me why the NHL went on strike, and you didn't even know it. Neither did I, but God told me why I was on strike. I have a lot of hockey dreams. So I have a hockey dream. It's a God dream. I don't know how it works, but it's, it's very important. <laughs> and I pay attention. But I'm going to tell you why. I had a dream th three. Are you ready for this? I don't know if you are, but anyway, I'll give it to you anyway. Hallelujah. Woo! Because you've got to be witnesses because we're in Ottawa. Or sort of, right? At least the senators play down the road. That's good enough. The city of Ottawa. We're in the city of Ottawa. City of Ottawa taxes paid here. Hallelujah. So here's how it works. I had a dream three years ago. And God said this to me in an audible voice. And I had to translate God speaking out of a speaker. There was a speaker and the voice of God. If you've ever heard the voice of God, I've only heard the, like the audible voice of God in my dream. So it really wasn't audible, but in my dream it was. You don't want God to stop talking. When he talks, it is like candy. It is like the most one, every word for, it is like the most wonderful thing that you can ever imagine. However, this is what God said. And I had to translate for my wife and God wouldn't stop so I could translate. So I had to translate as God talk. Can you imagine that? You know, when you translate, you usually stop. No, God kept talking, so I had to translate. And I knew my wife represented the church, and I knew that they weren't going to get the whole message, but it didn't matter. I had to translate whatever I got, and whatever they got, well, that's what they got. And one time my wife says, Charlie, you think God could slow down? That's what he said. That's what my wife said. And God says, tell her if I slow down, you're going to end up with a 16-tape message, and I don't have time. And so he kept talking. I thought, oh. So in other words, we get it or not get it, if you get it or not get it tonight, it's up to you. But some are going to get it. And here's what happened. God said, every year, there is an event in The Hague. You know where The Hague is? No. Netherlands. The International Court is there. Every year, there's an event that occurs in The Hague. And every year, Canada gets slapped. And, the, and when he said that, I saw Canada get slapped. Bam! And I saw the revival. The spirit of revival came. It was like we came out of a cave. And then, bam, this hand came. Bam, smacked us. Back we went. Every year, every year, after year, after year, after year. God showed me and told me at the same time. And he said, you must go and have a prayer summit up in Whistler and deal with it. Well, how would you like to get that from God? And he says, this is the thing that's stopping your revival in Canada. He said five dreams that week about everything that has to do with Holland stopping the revival. I'm like, I never heard of this. Amount. I'm like, oh, come on. God, what is this? I, I talked to Fateen, Chris, I, you name it, I talked to him. All the, the, the who's who in the Canadian prophetic zoo, I phoned him up. As soon as I woke up, I was on the phone. Listen, I got this dream. And I knew that I knew that I knew this is what we had to deal with. We had to deal with it, and we had to let God deal with it. And if it wasn't dealt with, it would happen every year. We'd get smacked. What it exactly was, I don't have a clue, but I knew where it came from. And I knew what it did. And the next day I had a dream, and I'm sitting in the revival. Do you know what the revival plane of Canada looks like? It's like the most beautiful private jet you've ever seen. Like this long, white, beautiful private jet. And when I have things that are made out of wedding cake frosting, white, 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 then I know something's up and something's going to happen. It was wedding cake white, because it's for the, for the bride. This stuff's for the, only for the bride. And it was a beautiful plane built for the bride. But it was built for the bride in Canada to bring revival to Canada. And I saw it sitting on a tarmac in my dream. The next day, and this big old 747 KLM jet goes over top and just floating in the air. And we're trying to take off. We bumped up. We bumped up. We couldn't get in the air. I thought, what? I don't want those kind of dreams. I want it. Now, woo! God goes, no, there's something happening. My people don't have a clue, including me. So God is telling me, you know what? I have had angels visit me, to my knowledge, since 1983. And, and they'd only talk to me about one thing whenever they visit me, and one thing only. Revival in Canada. That's it. Never anything else. Never to bring me the sports or the news. But always revival in Canada. And one day I thought, man, it's pretty cool to have angels visit you. Mind you, most, you know, you share that. You get on the internet. They, they, nobody thinks that angels should talk to you. It's okay if you see a demon, but not an angel. So anyway. And so, one time an angel spoke to me, something heavy duty in Canada. And then he added, do you know why we come? I'm like, why? He says, if we show up, angels, and I see them and they come and talk. He says, it's because you're not listening. And God's got to send us. I'm like, well, that shrunk my head pretty small. You know what? These things don't make you spiritual. In fact, you can be less spiritual than a lot of people. <laughs> so I can't be that spiritual. But I love God. And I want what he told me. So here's what happened. Woo! Hallelujah. Amen. I know I'm in Ottawa. We're going to see revival. It's got to happen here. 
You say, who am I talking to? God. When I look over there, I see no unbelief. Now, I don't see much here, but you know what? God's going to do what he said. So, I have a dream. So, what do you do with that dream? I call up all the who's who in the prophetic zoo in Canada. And some in the States. Nobody could figure it out, so we sort of put it on the shelf. And I pray, and I pray, and I pray. And all of a sudden, we had that Vancouver versus Boston fiasco, where Boston won. That was a disaster, in the spirit and the natural. I knew it. No, it was. Not, you know, I, I live in, I, I'm a Canadians fan. I sh all should be. But anyway, and <laughs> Canadians. And, so the, and I knew something was wrong. I knew it had to do with hockey. So I went on the internet. I'm like, what does hockey have to do with Holland? That's where skating comes from. Do you know skating comes from Holland? Yes. First skates made? Holland. Yes. Do you know that Canada, there's a, there, and, and I'll tell you, you'll figure it out. You're going to go, what do you mean by Holland? You're going to figure it out by the end of the night. This is so awesome. Yeah. <laughs> God's already done most of the work for us. So right before the strike, I had a dream. Three-part dream. Now, Carrie Price's cousin were, and his wife works for our ministry. So Carrie Price is the goalie for the Montreal Canadiens. So I have a dream, and he had long hair, and I didn't know he actually had long hair during the offseason. He grew his hair out. I didn't know that. I'm standing with him out of a three-part dream, and the ice is starting to melt. And then it really melts, and all of a sudden there's no more ice. And so I told people, they're going on strike this year. I know it. I'm telling you. And it's a prophetic sign for what's about to happen. And it was a good thing, by the way. Maybe not for the senators, but it was a good thing. But I'm going to tell you, and here's what happened. And God began to speak to me. And I began to pray. And I said, God, I don't know what's going on. What is going on with Holland? And then we, we looked in the internet. We looked at all these things. And all of a sudden, it happened. In January 26, which is a few weeks ago, I was in Calgary. Not, not in, in, because dreams are enigmas. I wasn't up in Whistler. I was in Calgary. I'm sitting with a group of people. We're about to do a meeting. And the Spirit of God comes on me. And I said, I know what happened. I know what's in that dream. I know what hinders Canada. I know it. I said, it's the queen, that was, the, the queen that gave birth here in the middle of the Second World War. Yeah. Did you know that the Queen of Holland came to Canada during the Second World War? Yeah. And they came here, and she gave birth to her daughter. But the Canadian government at the time declared a room in a hospital in Ottawa. They declared it as the nation of Holland. And that day, the Dutch flag flew over Holland that day and Canada for one day was declared Holland by an edict and something came in God showed me it came in and it came in it's been here ever since do you know every year Holland sends tulips to Canada every year how many of them 100,000 at least 100,000 every year and I mean, I knew that part, and I heard about the, the queen, but God told me, sit at the table, this is on the 26th of January, a few weeks ago, so I'm sitting there, and then my wife's right, and I said, that's it, I know what it is, and they're like, well, what does that mean? I said, I don't know, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> Do you know that you don't have to know it all here? Here's what Jesus said to the disciples just before he went. He says, where I go, you know, and the way, you know. And their head said, we don't know. <laughs> but Jesus just said, you know. They said, we don't know. You know. Do you know when God tells you to do something? doesn't matter if you figure it out here whatsoever. Yeah. Yeah. It, this is where most people lose it. And they don't go anywhere. They just spin their tires. Because they don't walk in the realm of faith. The realm of faith happens here when you don't know. But you do know. Jesus said, the way I go, you know. And where I go, you know. Thomas goes, we don't know where you're going with it. Well, you don't tell Jesus, first of all, when he says this, you say no. Okay? So I'm sitting at the table. As soon as I shared that, I said, I know it. It's when she was born that day. As I said it, my wife says, you need to check your email. So I checked my email on my phone, my brand new nice phone, Galaxy Note. <laughs> I open it up. We got stuck in the fog with Sarah Maynard at the airport. Surely me. Mom and me. For six and a half hours. Sarah Maynard heads up Red Leaf Prayer. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. It's Canadian Prayer. Okay, Sarah. We were stuck there for like, we talked for like four hours. And I share some of the stuff. And then she goes, she had sent me a, an email while I'm talking. And it says, Canada declares that today the Dutch flag will fly for the first time in 70 years do you know what happened on the 26th? Do you know what flag on the 26th and the 27th of January? Do you know what flag flew from the, from the part on the, on the Peace Tower? 
The Dutch flag. Did you know that? Most didn't. And you live right here. You can find the article. And, and they were declared, and again, they declared, 70 years to the day, 70 years to the day, God told me what it was. Without knowing, I'm just sitting there out of the blue, wasn't even thinking about it. God said, this is what it is. And that day, in the, in the, in the there's an article, Stephen Harper declares this day, Holland, and it ran from sundown 26 to sundown the 27th. What flag was flying over Canada? The Dutch flag. Can you imagine that? Over the Peace Tower. That's why I saw the Peace Tower sitting there with no Dutch flag tonight. I saw that. I thought, oh, something's going on. And I'm sitting there going, God, what are you doing? He says, I'm bringing revival to Canada. No, I'm bringing revival to Canada. I am bringing revival to Canada. I'm going to move out what's hindering. So I'm sitting there going, and so I begin to read. I thought, this is amazing. So on the 27th, I'm in Calgary at Southside Victory Center. I walk in. Guess what they have at the front of the church? A whole whack of tulips. I said, who put this here? But they didn't know nothing. I said, who put this here? And the lady, this prophetic lady from South Africa. Well, South Africa, who, who used to rule South Africa? The Dutch. She woke up, I guess, I guess the day before, and the Lord said, tulips tomorrow. So she got all these tulips, and she's in charge. Every week she changes it. Well, that, that Sunday they had tulips. One lady walks up to me. She's got a purple shirt full of tulips. She said, I've worn this for six months. God told me to wear it this morning. I said, absolutely, he did. One lady walks up. She says, I got this, this brand new, uh, she writes, what do you call that? Writing. She, uh, the Huda Baramba book there. Yeah, one of those. You know when you write every day your, your journal. And you know what had in the front tulips? I said, God, we're going to deal with it today. Calgary, you're going to do something. So I preached on it. I preached on what God was about to do and what he's about to move out. I get an email a few days later. Do you know the next day the Queen of Holland resigned? On the 28th, out of the blue, on the 28th, after 33 years, on the 28th of February, uh, 28th of January, just a few weeks ago, the Queen of Holland abdicated her throne. Why? Out of the blue, the next day. Why? Oh, God is doing something. God is doing something and moving things out of the way. Are you ready for what's happening, you guys? Get ready because it's going to happen. Many of you are going to go into Quebec. Many of you are going to go into Quebec and preach the gospel. Many of you are going to go in and you're going to preach because God is preparing the soul. And here's, are you ready for this, you guys? So we were just in Montreal in, uh, at, at Alliance AV. How many know where Alliance AV is? Uh, you guys know the dancing church there? You know, they, they have amazing dancers, music. And, and anyway, we were there. It was an amazing church. And so we're ministering there. And the lady came up. This is for you guys because you're on the right street. Sammy told, I, I, I knew that, I knew that. I told Sammy this is what it's about. It's about the diamonds tonight. And you're, isn't the corner called Diamond View? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So listen, so this is last week, you guys. So I'm in church. I, I feel the wood of a You ever get the, we'll call them the goose bumps. They're the, the, the holy bumps. Last week, I'm in Montreal. Now, I knew that all the, all the main roads in Quebec were built by the mafia. Can you imagine that? Before it got to the press, I knew. No, I did. About eight years ago, I drove back into Montreal. I'm driving down. I said, these roads are crummy. God said, that's because the mafia makes them all. And I'm like, what? He goes, yes. And they're, and, and they're going to be arrested and a whole bunch of them will be thrown in jail. Told me that with some mayors. Told me that seven or eight years ago. I told Shirley. I said, the first thing, first thing God's going to clear up is the Italian mafia. Any Catholics here? I want to bless you. Good. Well, you need a new pope. But anyway, I'll tell you why that happened. And that now when you hear that, now, now we're, gonna, we're getting into deep waters because things have happened. There is no, there's no recourse. God's already doing it in the natural. The Bible says he holds the heart of the king in his hand. He moves it whatever way he wants to. And so God told me. And then about two years ago, it came out in the, all over the papers and news, the four major companies that make all the roads in Quebec, the, the major roads, the freeways, are all owned by Italian, Italian mafia, all of them. And they had pictures of Italian guys coming in with, you ever, you've seen it on the news, they had money in their socks and they go into this place and they sit down with the mayors and they just trade socks, no, trade money. And the guy would stick them in his sock and out he'd go. Well, they're throwing those guys in the jail left and right. Because, how do I say this? I can't say it another way. So I'm just going to, sometimes you just got to kick something and see what happens. Because the Italian mafia comes from where? Where's the Vatican? They're all, it's in the spirit. There's the same spirit. And you see, what, I don't know, there's good Catholics and people that love God are in the Catholic Church. One of my best, my mentor is a Catholic. I mean, the most unreligious guy you can imagine. Ralph Nolt. En français, c'est no. Ralph Nolt. He's an amazing, not no, no, but N-A-U-L-T, no. But I'm telling you this. It's related in Quebec. That's why in Quebec, you have such an issue. Oh, God's dealing with it right now. 
But you know what he's going to do? He's going to set the God's, there's going to be such a revival among the Catholics. I'm telling you, it's going to be the envy of the church. Because God is going to come. Yes. But what he's dealing is, he's dealing with the corruption in the natural. In Montreal and in Quebec right now. But here's my vision. Here's my dream. Pardon me, it was a vision. I had it about, about the same time, a little, maybe a little bit after. And I had a vision in, when I was in Abbotsford. And I was going to see this Quebec pastor. And it, it all boils down today. All this happened for today. Now, if, you know, for tomorrow too, but for tonight. All these things I'm sharing, I'm sharing with you in Ottawa. Because this is where it all happens. This is where it all happens, you guys. This is where it all happens. It's where it all happens. And God's going to move. My grandfather was born here. And some of you know I preached on it. My great, 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 great grandfather was an original member of the Parliament of Canada in 1840. And between 1840 and 1842. And he was in the government. He was original party. He was original member of the Conservative Party. Can you imagine that? Original! Philip Henry Moore on my mother's side, direct descendant in my blood, is government in Canada. And, and my grandfather was born here. He wasn't. He was born in Scotland originally. But my grandfather was born here, who I get my name, Charles Edward Moore. My name is Charles, so I got his, my name from his grandfather, from my grandfather. That was, that was his name. Now listen, I have inheritance here, so do you. And if your feet live here and you live in this area, this is for you. So this is the vision I had. Going to meet a pastor in Quebec about seven years ago. I suddenly saw, as it, it, was, it was the most horrific scene. God said, you're going up. And I got excited. I'm going up. Hallelujah. I like going up. Because I'm seated in heavenly places. God said, you're going up. And then when I got happy, he goes, not that far up. And I went, oh no. Because I've gone up, but then I've gone up. I don't like just going up here. To this realm here. I don't, I don't care what you call it. it. It doesn't have any name to me. It's a place that the devil has taken for himself, but it doesn't belong to him. He's been already defeated. Je Jesus took the keys of death and hell away, but he, he, as long as he can get men to agree with him, even in the church, he'll, he'll try to rule from a high place. That's the way, what he does. However, you have access to that. And so God brought me there and he showed me the stronghold over Quebec. It was the most hideous thing you've ever seen. It was an ice castle. So far this way, I couldn't see the end of it. So far this way, I couldn't see the end of it. And so far down, I couldn't see the bottom. All I could see was the tops and there were these, these peaks and they were like wicked, high peaks. It looked like the castle of the wicked witch of the east. I mean, it was horrifying and it was so demonic and dark. And I didn't want to look at it. And I said, God, what is that? He said, look again. And I looked back and I saw all these diamonds, millions of diamonds encased in this castle. And God said this, what you're seeing is the stronghold over Quebec. Then he says, and those diamonds are the souls of the people of Quebec. He said, they're frozen toward me now, but I'm about to bring the fire. And he says, I'm going to melt the ice and the diamonds will fall. That's what he told me. They will fall. They will fall, and they're already starting to fall. No, they're already starting this. And so here I am, and, and Odette remembered this thing. And of all the things, a man I hadn't seen for years ago, the very pastor that was in Abbotsford, the Quebec guy, was sitting at the back of the church this last Sunday. I mean, of all the timing, and she gave us this sack. And I looked, I looked into it. It was this burlap sack, sack, and inside it, because it snowed on the way there. It snows almost everywhere we go, you know, even if it's not supposed to, unfortunately. I went into the treasury of snow. God said it would happen, and it happened. It happened today. Now, I'm not saying every time it snows, it's because of us, but many people blame us. However, I went into the treasury of snow, which the Bible says is reserved for the day of war and battle. Man, I see the lightnings of God coming when I said that. Because they're here for the day. Now, listen. So she, and you know what was inside that burlap thing? Well, there was some white stuff, because she said that was the ice melting. It was a great big, it wasn't a real diamond, but it was like a dime this big, about that high, but it was made of glass. She said, that's for the people of Quebec. I said, the ice is already melting. I saw it. It's already melting.